Keystone Species, the importance of sea otters in kelp forests. Species that are very important to an ecosystem are called keystone species. They're named after the keystone in an arch. Without the keystone, the arch can't support itself and crumbles. Keystone species are so important to their ecosystems that without them, the whole ecosystem suffers. Kelp forests are a really cool marine ecosystem. Kelp is actually not a plant, but belongs to a group of protists called brown algae. Some bamboo is famous for growing about a foot a day, but in ideal conditions, kelp can grow a foot and a half per day. In only four days, the kelp could grow six feet. Kelp forests cover about 25% of the world's coastlines and thrive in cold, nutrient-rich coastal waters. Since there are so many different species that depend on this ecosystem, kelp forests have really high biodiversity. Even people use kelp every day. Algin, a substance derived from kelp, is used as a thickening agent in products such as toothpaste, ice cream, cosmetics, shampoo, and conditioner. The most prominent keystone species in kelp forests is Enhydra lutris, the sea otter. So why is the sea otter a keystone species? Let's take a look at a healthy, thriving ecosystem, a kelp forest with sea otters. This kelp forest provides for animals like Garibaldi, sea urchins, snails, bristleworms, anemones, sea lions, seals, gray whales, sea stars, brittle stars, crabs, jellyfish, rockfish, ghouls, terns, cormorants, great blue herons, and of course, sea otters. During the 18 and 1900s, people overhunted sea otters nearly to extinction. But then, scientists began to notice that the kelp forests started to look like this. How did the removal of only one species nearly destroy the ecosystem? Turns out, the answer is sea urchins. Sea urchins are echinoderms, like sea stars, and look like balls of purple spines. And their favorite food ever is kelp. In a healthy ecosystem, sea otters eat sea urchins, which helps keep their population under control. But without sea otters, the urchins have few other predators, so they reproduce until there are so many of them that they eat the entire kelp forest, leaving only sea urchin barrens. Sea otters affect the whole ecosystem. When their population declines, their prey, the sea urchins, increase. The sea urchins then eat a ton of the kelp, so the kelp population decreases drastically. And all the animals that depend on the kelp forests are now missing their homes, their food, their shelter from storms and predators, what they need to survive, and their populations are going to suffer. Well, the people that noticed that the sea urchin barons were taking over their beautiful kelp forests wanted to do something about it. Sea otters are now protected by laws, including the Marine Mammal Protection Act. Their populations are nowhere where they reached historically, and sea otters are still considered an endangered species, but they are slowly recovering. One of the sea otters' current most prominent threats is that of pollution, especially by oil spills. How can we, as a community, work to protect our sea otters and kelp forests in the future, as well as other keystone species and important ecosystems?